So uh, this video is for the AQA Economics Paper 3. Okay, so the Paper 3 is a synopsis paper. And the reason why I'm making this video is because there's one question that I think um, requires special consideration. And it's the 10 mark to what extent question. And the reason for that is um, when we look at Paper 1 and we look at Paper 2, we, um, when we look at the marks roughly around the 10 marks, so for example, like the 9 mark question, we see that command term with regards to exploit. And even uh, in section C, we see that uh, 15 marker, uh, again, is an exploit. But then all of a sudden we get to paper 3 and we get this 10 marker and it says to what extent. And it's completely different to any of the questions based on the marks that we have experienced in the other two papers. So therefore, what I want to do in this video is just quickly go over uh, the exam technique which is required for a 10 mark to work extent question. So to begin with, um, one of the key factors that you need to consider with a paper three is the amount of extracts. So um, one extract, two extracts, some data, some further data, some more data, and it just keeps on going, and then another extract, and another extract. And we can see that there's so much information in the paper three. Now, the first bit of advice that I'm going to give you is um, with all this data and with all these um, extracts, I would not recommend to read it first. All right. I wouldn't open I wouldn't recommend opening that exam paper, finishing the multiple choice, and when you get to all these all this data, all these extracts, whether it's qualitative or quantitative, um, just reading it all before you've even considered what the question is. What you should actually do is, is get to the question, get to the 10 marker, read the 10 marker in terms of what the question is asking for, and then it will give you a little bit more guidance. So when you're going back into those extracts, then you can have a look at exactly what you are, uh, what you're targeting and what you're trying to kind of find as evidence to support that the points that you're making. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll read all of these extracts and then suddenly you'll think, actually, I've kind of forgotten what was in extract A and you'll have to go back to it to, to try and acknowledge it and, and find that evidence again and it'll just waste time. So you do have to think about time management because paper three, uh, when I've spoken to uh, previous year groups uh, with year 13 and many classes, they've always said to me that actually they found paper three quite difficult for time management. So to begin with, this is um, a question um, from, I think it's 2018, and it says, uh, you're an economist working for OPEC. So to begin with, with the paper threes, they're almost like role play investigation. So you have to look at, well, what is the question or what is the... Um, the, the guidance from, um, for, for all the questions in the, in the last section of the paper, what is it trying to get you to role play? What scenario, what situation are you doing it from in terms of perspective? So with this one, you are the economist and you're working for OPEC. All right. So um, with regards to OPEC, you have been asked to produce a review of the world energy market. And as part of the investigation, you are provided answer, uh, answers sorry, to these three questions. Now, I don't personally think for this 10 marker, you need to worry too much about the uh, the scenario and the situation and on what perspective you're looking at. But especially for the next couple of questions, you might have to make sure that you are doing it from, from the perspective of OPEC. So. With regards to um, to what extent, I think it's absolutely crucial that um, you really emphasise the evaluation that is required. And when you're looking at the examiner's reports and you're looking at, uh, and again, if you go through the examiner reports for every single year that the, there's, there's been a paper three, you will see that in every single feedback from the examiner, they are looking for an overall judgment. So you have to make sure at the end of your answer, there is an overall judgment to that. Otherwise, you, you're going to lose marks because to what extent and the evaluation uh, which is needed is absolutely crucial. But, but you can also evaluate throughout. So after every point that you're making, make sure that you are considering um, how you could evaluate that point, how you could maybe even criticise the data that you're going to be using. And I'll look at that in a second. But again, some of the examiner's reports, uh, they do say at least three points should be considered within it. Okay, And, and we'll delve into the structure uh, in terms of what that might mean. Now, with regards to the application, as you've seen before, the amount of extracts there are, uh, and it's really, really important that you do use that. Now, it does say extract C, okay? But that doesn't mean that you only use extract C. 
There are all the other extracts that might be just as crucial, but extract C has a lot of the data, a lot of the calculations that you will have to, or sorry, it has the data for you to carry out the calculations because you will have to manipulate that data to, to try and prove in terms of points that you're going to make. Now, my advice to you is obviously use the data. Uh, look at extract C, have a look at what the data is telling you, but then take that data one step further. Uh, and that might be in terms of calculation that you could do. Obviously, every year there will be different types of um, data sets, and every year you might have to do different types of calculations. Some years it might be specific. So, for example, you might have to work out, I don't know, GDP per capita. Maybe they give you the population, maybe they give you the GDP. Sometimes it might be other factors. Within this case study, actually, the only calculations that you really have to do is looking at the percentage, uh, percentage changes or the percentages of the overall energy consumption. And again, I'll show you that soon. Uh, it could be just looking at the trend trends in the data as well um, in terms of the years that have been provided for you. But again, you'll, you'll understand what I mean by that uh, when we have a look at the data. So you must use the data in extract C. So I am going to, at the beginning of this video, focus mostly on extract C, but then we will look at the other extracts as well. So with regards to the um, the mark scheme, what I'll do is I'll just quickly go over what the mark scheme uh, is asking for. Now, I'm just going to really focus on um, level three because that's what we should be targeting. We, we want those higher marks. And if you're watching this video, I, I hope that you're not aspiring for a level two. You should be aspiring for the highest level. And it's, it's easy to do that if you follow the techniques. So with regards to at least three relevant, well-developed issues, all right. Now, those issues could link to one another, uh, but you need at least three. OK, that's what the examiner is asking for. Uh, also, the, the use of numerical and statistical data, which I've already touched upon. So it's with paper three it's absolutely because you've been given so many figures. It's absolutely essential that you do use those figures. And, and that could be just looking at the figures that are, are there in the data and using that or for the really high level application is actually using that data to calculate new points and new sets of data, which can then prove as evidence even further. Um, again, a final judgment is absolutely crucial. All right, and I think what's, if you if you have a look at the differences between level three and level two, we can see that um, with level two, it's, it's fairly well organized and it includes at least two relevant. Well, for level three, it's, it's well organized and it includes at least three relevant. So there is, there's definitely clear differences between the two. Um, some satisfactory use of numerical and statistical data. So that could be just in terms of what do you see, what could you use? But I'd probably argue for effective use, you have to get that data and you have to do something with that data whether that's manipulate the data in terms of carrying out calculations, whatever that might be. But again, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, with regards to evaluation, and this could be used for evaluation throughout. Now, personally, I, I, within this example, I don't think there's too many limitations, okay? But in other paper threes, it'll be very, very clear in terms of what the limitations might be. You might be asking for, for example, um, how this country is developed, but you've only got certain sets of data. Maybe you've just got the human development index, but you can't just judge the development of a country just based on the HDI. You need other factors to come in as well. And... Um, so when you look at the limitations of the data, just look at what data is available and then see, well, actually, what data is missing and what's the issues with that data? Uh, we know, for example, with HDI, there's issues with HDI. Um, you look at the, the years of schooling, but we don't know the quality of education. You look at, for example, the, um, the GNI per capita, but we don't know how that is shared across the population with regards to um, equality. So have a look at how you could possibly um, criticise the data that is available. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start to go through some of this data and just kind of explore um, how we could use this, da this data to get those level three uh, application points. In terms of, I've just kind of removed myself from the screen so you can have a closer look at the data, uh, just so I'm not uh, blocking anyone's view. But this whole question is about uh, fossil fuels. So before we do anything, I think it's important to actually have a look at what fossil fuels are. 
Now, they do provide notes on the data, as we can see there, oil consumption is measured um, and, and it's telling you that the oil, natural gas and coal are fossil fuels. But let's just have a quick uh, look at what fossil fuels actually are. Fossil fuels are coal, oil and natural gas. Oil powers most of the transportation sector. Coal and natural gas power most of the electricity. Now, in the first couple decades of the 21st century, in order to sustain our dependence on fossil fuels, we're going to very risky, very extreme new sources. You see this in things like mountaintop removal or coal. Fracking for natural gas. Offshore drilling for oil. All right, so we know what fossil fuels are. Um, I, again, the notes do give us that guidance, but um, let's have a look at what the data shows us. I mean, first of all, what I want to look at is the total uh, co consumption of energy. And we can see that, obviously, um, it, it gives you the differences between 2006 and 2016. So let's have a look. I mean, we can see that, yes, consumption of energy has increased. All right, there's no doubt about it. But why don't we just actually take that data a little bit further and let's have a look at the percentage increase so we can see that actually the total consumption of energy is actually increased by 17.8 percent so we could we could delve into that um but again that doesn't answer the question yet we know that energy consumption has increased but what about fossil fuel so again let's delve into that so if we look at oil natural gas and coal we know that they're the fossil fuels uh, and we can see from 2006 to 2016, again, it looks like it's increased. But let's put some percentages on it. So straight away, what we can see is if we add um, all oil, natural gas and coal up in 2006, and then we add it all up for 2016, we can see that actually it's increased by 15.3%. So again, if we delve into... Um, Total energy consumption, which has gone up by 17.8%. Fossil fuel has gone up by 15.3%. Okay, again, let's take that step further. So if we have a look at, again, oil, natural gas and coal, what we can see is as a total consumption of, um, again, all energy sources, so that's nuclear energy, hydroelectricity, uh, other renewables. So oil, natural and gas as the total in 2006 was 87.4%. Okay, so clearly the most dominant source of energy. But in 2016, it was 856 so again, it's become less dominant, but it's still clearly much more dominant than the rest. So we can use that. Um, again, let, let's start to delve into other factors. So let's have a look at nuclear energy, hydroelectricity and other renewables because they're the non-fossil fuels. And what we can see there is in 2006, the non-fossil fuels in terms of overall consumption was 12.6%. But in, in 2016, by carrying out the percentages again of the total consumption, it was 14.5%. So that has increased. We can place significance on it. Has it increased by much? And has fossil fuel decreased by much? And we can delve into that. But we've got those statistics to play around with. Uh, furthermore, again, when we have a look at the differences as to how much they've increased by, we can see that oil has increased by 10.9%. We can see that natural gas has increased by 24.5%. We can see that coal has increased by 13.3%. Nuclear has fallen by 6.8%. But hydro and other renewable sources, so your more green energy sources, have increased dramatically. So hydro by 32.3 and other by 351.7%, which is pretty, well, clearly very, very significant. And as the note says, other renewables just mean energy that's generated from sources such as wind, solar, and so on. So... When we're, when we're kind of using this data and we're starting to structure and we're starting to think, well, how could we use it? Um, again, a quick plan could be done. So in terms of why we think that fossil fuel is falling, we can see that well, fossil fuel as a percentage of overall consumption um, has fallen. We can see that non-fossil fuel has risen. 
we can see that other renewables has grown the most. So we can use that information. But to argue against that, we can see that fossil fuels have actually still risen. And oil has risen by 10.9%, natural gas by 24.5%, and coal by 13.3%. So every single fossil fuel has also risen. Now, again, that's extract C, but like I said before, the other extracts still have really important information that we need to use. So again, if you want to, you can go on the AQA website, you can download the 2018 paper, and you can have a look at these extracts yourself and you start, start planning and structuring what you could use. But what I found was in um, the earlier extracts, uh, for example, extract A, it, it specifically tells you, I think it was A, it specifically tells you the concerns about carbon emissions of global warming. So that could be a reason why other greener sources are starting to be used more. The technological advancements also in these types of green energy is, well, as I've said before, it's, it's improving. There's a downwards trend in the price of coal, which we can see in the figures, which could suggest a fall in demand. However, to suggest maybe why it's not, oil prices are rising due to an increased demand as the global economy sees growth. So that might be suggesting that, yes, oil prices have had a downwards trend, but that might be simply to do with um, issues from 2009 Great Recession. And actually now uh, global growth is picking up. We're starting to see the demand for oil picking up as well, hence why prices are rising. That, that could be an argument that we could use. So kind of just to end this video, I just wanted to show you a model answer. So um, this is a model answer that's, uh, that I've written for you. Now, um, feel free to pause the screen and have a read. Um, what you can see is that there's clearly data being used. And in the second paragraph, uh, the data has been obviously stretched even further by um, creating analytical points from the percentages. Uh, you can see from the final bit of judgment, I have put uh, a slight limitation. Like I said before, other case studies and other years will probably have more opportunity, but this one didn't necessarily. But I have put uh, when the uh, so I've put here in the very very last bit. On the other hand, as we see a rise in global growth, it should be analysed as to whether the fossil fuel growth continues and if it continues at a larger scale than what we saw in 2006 to 2016 data when the world was still recovering from the financial crisis. Therefore, having forecasts of post 2016 would have been useful in offering speculative analysis. So what I'm, what I'm going to also do, um, I'm going to copy and paste this model answer and I'm going to put it in the description of the YouTube video so you can obviously uh, put that into your notes and you can have that as your own model answer as well.